Okay, so um, is there only uh, is there like uh, only English uh, speaking here? Uh, doesn't speak French at all. Okay, only one. Um, okay, so here's the language. All right. Um, so how to make content management uh, enjoyable for your customer? Before uh, I start, I present myself. I'm Jean-François Cartier from the company Q1. Um, we are a sponsor this year. Uh, this, is, this is actually the first year we sponsor something, so we're really proud of that. Um, I work for uh, uh, Q1 for maybe uh, seven years now, and um, I've been working with Drupal more than ten years ago. Uh, I started uh, very early. So, uh, yeah, uh, and we were two in the company. There's the other guy called uh, Chris Sando, he's my partner, and uh, we're both uh, seniors. So, I'm doing the front end part, he's doing the back end part, so we work this way. So, uh, why am I doing this, uh, this, uh, this speech? So, when I do my, uh, my interview with my, my clients, when I show them the work I just did, uh, for them, let's say there, there's a $30,000 project and I'm really proud of the work I've done for them and uh, I want to show them how it works and how to manage their content. Uh, I sit to them, I teach them how it works and sometimes they really, really like it, sometimes they don't. And uh, I wonder how I could make this experience more enjoyable and how they could uh, have fun playing with their new tools. So, um, uh, I have a little disclaimer to do. Uh, everything that, uh, that I will say today is, is coming from my own perspective, from my own experiences. So if you have anything to say uh, during the presentation or maybe after uh, something, uh, to share something that you wish and you want to help, uh, uh, you want to add something to my presentation, uh, I'll be glad. Um, this is why we're here. So I'll be talking about the forms, the Drupal forms, uh, the dashboard. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll explain it later. Uh, the themes and the, the layout tools. Um, some subject will be repeated because a lot of people already talked about uh, Gutenberg and everything. I will, I will talk about uh, those things again. Uh, it's, it will be uh, kind of trivial. Uh, because uh, I will just talk about um, the experience, the, the perspective of the, the customer. So um, at the end, it's not too technical, there is some code, but not that much. Okay, so the login form, the first thing. It's the first, uh, a very first experience of the, uh, the customer. They enter in the, this, this stage, which is uh, Two fields, essentially, uh, with a submit button. And I think that if you don't take care of it, it can be really, really uh, uh, a rough, and um, it's a miss, you don't miss the, uh, you miss the opportunity to make something really better and to provide a wow effect. So um, I think you, you should don't miss your chance. Uh, this is the I, I know it's part of the theme, uh, but it's essentially always the same thing. There is the, uh, the tabs up there, uh, the two fields, and um, you got some of the descriptions. And well, I mean, it's very functional, it works. Uh, we get used to the, the, those little things. When you work with Drupal, it's always the same thing, so we don't ask uh, the question how to make it better. Um, actually, in Umami, the, uh, the profile that comes with the, the core now. Uh, I think they did their best to make it uh, enjoyable, but at the end, I, I don't find it really, really, like, it's not super. And uh, if you have to use this form like every day of your life, or maybe once a week, I mean, it, it would be nice to have something very uh, well done. So I, I, I look for something that I found really beautiful, and there's this uh, Weight Watcher form. <laughs> um, so it, it does pretty much the same thing as uh, WordPress. It gets you to uh, a page uh, where they remove all the context of the website. They keep the theme, but they remove all the, con the context of the website. And um, 
they just focus on the essential things. So we don't have like um, unnecessarily uh, description under the fields. Uh, there is little, this little uh, hide and show password. Uh, the persistent login uh, widget, and uh, you actually have the, the same links there. You have the sign up button, uh, the link under the form. Uh, it's it's intelligent to put it there because if you want to log in, you don't necessarily want to create an account. If this is the only way that you have to create an account on the website. I think there's a design problem there. So, yeah, they did it right, I think. And uh, if you want to do uh, these kind of things, uh, there's two modules that I, I think you should use. There's the view password module for the little uh, password thing, the, the little I, but it, it soon will be in the core, so don't mind about that. It's going to be here uh, soon. Uh, there's the persistent login uh, module as well, uh, which is really easy to implement as well. Um, and if you want to do the, the little part uh, under the, the submit button, uh, there's some code in the following. Uh, you don't have to, but I think it's a really um, intelligent way to work uh, this form particularly. Because if you want to add the sign up button outside and not really in the tabs on the top, like it used to be. And I, I, I'm not saying that just because I want to be fancy or anything. I think it's in an intelligent way to, to place your, uh, your elements in this page uh, particularly. So if you want to log in every day and the sign up uh, button is super huge, it's kind of redundant for no reason. So let's say you just want to do the same thing. You go in your team file, that team, and the line eight and nine, you remove the description there. And I know a lot of people know how to do this. I mean, if you're advanced, uh, it's going to be really easy for you. But for those who don't really know how to manage this, I put the code there and I'll just explain it pretty fast. Okay, so number uh, the line eight and nine, you remove the description, the unnecessary description. After that, there's the label uh, on the top of the field that I want to put it in, inside a, a placeholder. So I'll show you the, the function later. I'll just put it there like that. I call a function. And then after the form with password, um, to make it under the, the form, you just have to, uh, to use the, the, the weight attribute. And finally, for the register button outside of the form, you just put it uh, in a suffix. And, um, the suffix only requires HTML, so you have to render it first. So it's really uh, simple to do. Um, and yeah, this is my my function I found maybe it's on Stack Overflow or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's it. If you want to do the same thing, okay. Now I'm logged in. Now what? The thing is that uh, you're right in, in a page like that uh, most of the time. So. There's nothing really going on there. Uh, you, you've been member for maybe, I don't know, 20, 20 days and okay, so this is the information I got. You have this little uh, black and white bar on the top, uh, which can be confusing at first if you've never used uh, a Drupal website. So I don't think it's really interesting. It feels like, and I, I keep the same thing up as the doorman, uh, the, the same analogy of the house. Uh, it feels empty, it's an empty entryway, nothing uh, to put my code on, uh, there's no mirror, there's no rack form machine, anything like that. There's, it's really strict, so it kind of feels strange, and if, you're, uh, if you let your user go in on this, on this page and just say, oh, it's the default behavior in Drupal, I really, really don't like this, uh, this sensor, because most of the time they will say, ah, okay, I mean, it, it doesn't feel finished. So, um, I would say that you should redirect the user to somewhere. And we all know about the logic destination, I'll just explain it. It's, um, let's say you want to go in a car, and they ask you to, uh, let's say, log in first if you want to process to your, to your chair. So, um, you just um, send the user to the login page, and you put in the, the address bar, destination and they go back there. So this redirection is logical and it should be this way. You shouldn't change it. But after that, let's say you just want to log in your website. 
should you should you show him the front page? I guess that's an idea. But the thing is that you kind of lose an opportunity to do something. I mean, okay, I'm logged in. I see the front page. I know it. Okay, and there's still this uh, black and white bar up there, but. Sometimes they don't have access to this bar up there, so they will have maybe access to a little link up there on the on the right, uh, top right, uh, with their name. They'll have to click, and I mean it's not very effective, I think. So should you redirect them to the structure in, in the admin, the content page? Well, yeah, I guess, but it's not very nice, and you you send them to a team that is. Uh, Right now, it's the team seven by default, and it's great, it's dull. Um, I don't think it's the best solution. So I think we should use the dashboard. And what we did uh, at QA, we made a little, little module that, created, that creates a page, and we, we use it from project to another. So it's really simple to do, it's just a page. I mean, nothing really fancy here, but, but still, uh, Here's the example of across.ca. Uh, we have a lot of things that we, we can put in there. So let's say, uh, okay, sure, we put some user summary, some information about the user. And if he, want, if he wants to change his uh, password or anything, we put the links there. On the right, we can have call to actions, the important things that you want your user to do. Let's say uh, you, wanna, you want him to subscribe or Buy a membership or anything like that. I think it's the place uh, to to bring your 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 customer to. And I said by customer, I say the user who's gonna who's gonna be in this uh, this kind of place. Um, you have your quick link, your quick links. You can have a list of the last transaction if there's such a thing in your website. Uh, and on the, the left, you can have other links that you can provide them. So I think it's a it's a very interesting way to. Uh, to show your your uh, your user how to use your website. Uh, let's say he has he wants to create content every time he likes it. Instead of having uh, to bring it there and playing with the, the menu on the top, I think you, you should just put some links there. It's going to be really easy for him to work with the interface. Uh, it's much more productive and it's understandable. So, um, and you can team it very well. So, I think it's a very good idea. And I'll just show you real quick how to do this module. Again, I know a lot of you know how to do it, and it's very simple. So, here's the, uh, the structure on the left. And uh, yeah, you just create a route um, with a, a path. You'll want to, uh, to change the permission, though, not the uh, kind of access, because it's, uh, it's not going to be a good thing. But uh, you have to take care of this. Uh, I like to have um, a tweet template uh, in which you'll have to manage everything. Uh, by experience, uh, this page doesn't change a lot. And I understand that I just um, showed you the, the example of ActFast which changed a lot. It wasn't a good example. But most of the time, the little things like create, create a, a new content, it's always the same. Thing. And you can definitely uh, add a tweet file with hard-coded HTML inside of it, and it's going to work really fine for the user, and you'll find it really interesting, I promise you. So you, uh, you create your, uh, your controller, and then you put all the dynamic content in there, and then you send it back to your tweet, uh, like I did here, the team dashboard that I just created in the module and you put your content there. So it's a very uh, simple version of what I, I showed you before. Uh, you have the name, the email, and the like button, and everything's there. I mean, it doesn't need any, anything else than that. And honestly, every, every client that I've shown uh, this kind of interface, he really loved it, so I think it's a good idea. And if you, don't, if you don't like custom module like that, you can still have um, a module with the Drupal.org, uh, the local control admin dashboard. Um, it's been released, uh, the last release is on uh, uh, January last year, so it's not updated a lot, but still it's working fine. Now, the forms. 
Um, okay, so there's, a, there's this thing from the right form when you, you enter in, a, uh, in any forms, in any node form on the same interface. So there's this bar on the right, and there's a lot of things in there. And most of the time, my, my customers are, are looking at that, and I understand. Okay, so they have, they have to pass through a learning curve. They have to understand how Drupal works and how things are, uh, are working. Yeah. Are working. So after that, I mean, after they understand what's, what's in there, if you can remove the non-important stuff or the thing that they will never use or you don't even use them in, in, the, in the, the website, as in um, promoted for front page, I just moved the cursor. Uh, yeah, so if you don't use it, I think you should just remove this function. You just remove this part, you won't see it, and it won't affect anything, just remove them. Um, the other information, it's really rare that they have to play with that. If, if they have to, it's alright, it's there and they'll use it, it's perfect. But if they don't use it, it's confusing for them. Uh, the URL aliases, if you have path upload installed on your website, and, okay, I understand that it's always a good thing to edit your URL, but most of the time it's, uh, it's not necessary. It'll take care of it dynamically, and it, it, it will just work out. Um, the common settings, it depends on the, the content type you want to create and the option to be selected. The menu settings it is a nice to have to have there, so, because you can manage it in other places. So, I think you just have to remove this. And uh, the re revision part. This part is so confusing for a lot of people. Um, I think none of, none of my clients use it. So I understand that if it's really uh, really useful for people, they should keep it. But honestly, from my experiences, uh, they don't necessarily uh, need it. So I just get rid of them. And you can embrace as well the right column. You can put some redundant uh, field and put it, uh, put them in the right column so they don't uh, pull the, the, it's a pollution for your main form. So it's going to shrink the form, it's going to be more concise, and then after, uh, I think it's going to be more compressible. So a little code here, a little uh, line, some lines of code. Uh, so this is doing what I just showed you it here. Uh, if you want to put some fields on the right side, it's really simple to do. You just create a module or add this to something else, uh, some, uh, another module, uh, another existing module, and you just take your field, the, you take the ID of your field, you assign a group, and you'll just, you'll just have to create a new group. So, uh, like so. The, other, the only important thing is that you create a new group um, attribute here for your group, your detail, and set it to events. If you don't set it to events, you, you will think that it's something else. So uh, Drupal, uh, uh, the team seven will understand that. And this, uh, this book here, the form alter, uh, this one is for node add, but you'll have, uh, you'll have to do it as well for node edit. That's why I, I put it um, the line element. So uh, both uh, both functions are important. Okay, now the easy way. So there's some things that I like, some things that I don't. Uh, I really like the format, uh, the format option here. There, uh, most of the time, uh, I I kind of forget <laughs> to explain and explain this feature to my to my customers, and then after when I show it back to them, they it's like. I see stars in their eyes, like, oh my god, that's a very, very good feature, because if you do copy-paste from, let's say, uh, Word, and there's a lot of pollution that are into the strip, uh, and the layout is, like, broken in the WYSIWYG, and they don't understand why the behavior is a little bit off, uh, they'll understand because of this feature, so they'll see that there's a lot of things to do, and they have to think it. So this is very useful. And then after you have uh, the, the little TX next to it, which strips the style, always interesting for them. And the source, uh, the source option is, yeah, I think it's interesting, but if you, if you 
could just remove it from their interface, it would be better because they, they don't think it's an option to go in the code and I don't think it is. You should just provide more complex way to uh, to manage the layout if they want to do some complex stuff like, par uh, like paragraphs. Um, on the right you have the styles. Okay, so this is a very quick way to do things. You just create your, uh, your your style sheet, you add little styles uh, in your style sheet. Then after, in the, the configuration of the WYSIWYG, you just put, let's say, okay, I have a, a style for the link, I just put it there, and it's going to be nice and really quick. But the user, when they see that, they don't really understand. There's a weird part about this. Um, they have to click on the link to be able to add a style for the link. And if they click on the paragraph, they won't see the style anymore and they won't understand exactly how it works. I know it's logical for us to, to understand what's going on there, but uh, for them it's confusing, really, really confusing. And I don't really appreciate that for a second reason. Um, when you put your style sheet inside the WYSIWYG, they, are, they, they will embed the style of the, the element inside this part here. And sometimes the padding is so huge, it's not, it's not very uh, user-friendly, let's say. All right, so, um, okay, so the body uh, field, um, the little uh, summary up there, if you use it, if the, if the user actually uses this function, it's really cool, but in the same time, it's nested. So I think there's a problem with this part. It's really interesting because when you want to show the, the body, um, you want to display this field, you have the option to show whether it's trimmed or you take a summary. So this part is really, really interesting. But if they never use it, I think it's confusing for them, this option, they click on it, they have another text field appearing, and yeah. So if you don't use it, just get rid of it. Uh, and the, the part on the, on, the, on the bottom. So this part is, for me, it's just pollution because they will see it once, and let's say they read it, okay, they understand it, and it's there all the time. It's, it makes the, the user scroll so much. So I don't really like it personally. Uh, if you want to restrict um, the, the, the format for the user, there's a module called Allow uh, Formats, and uh, you just configure it so it, it's, let's say, full HTML, something like that, and it's going to be set. And for the rest, this part here, I think you should just Again, remove it in CSS or something like that. The, the weight concept uh, is also something very confusing for the customer. They don't really understand why it's there because there's already a, a, drag, a, a drag and drop function. So it's not really useful most of the time. Again, it's my, own per, uh, my personal experiences, but they never, they never use it. So, yeah. This is an accessibility issue. You cannot have a drag and drop without this link that toggles it, so you mm -hmm. can actually enter value. So yeah. if your users require an accessible interface, uh, you can't move it. Yeah, my, 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 uh, my whole presentation right now doesn't fit with accessibility at all. So uh, if, you, if your client has a special need, uh, you should keep everything that is inside the core because it works very well with accessibility. As in, um, when you um, uh, you create a field group, uh, no, when you create like uh, radios, it, gra uh, it grabs it inside like, something like field set or something, and it's important for uh, accessibility reason. But you have to clean it back, and it's like a pain in the ass to clean it. But I understand why it's there. But if, again, if your if your customer doesn't need it, those the tricks I, I, I say today is for the people who doesn't need them. Yeah. Okay, so HTML5 validation. Visually, it's, uh, most of the time it's terrible for me. Um, let's say right now I didn't fill out the field, so I want to, to, to correct my error, but it scrolled to the, to the field and it doesn't show the the label, so I have to scroll a little bit more to show what's going on here, and now I can see it. And sometimes uh, the validation is inside 
uh, something wrapped in JavaScript, and you don't even see this, uh, this uh, tooltip here. So if you can, I mean, I understand that sometimes the forms are really complex, and you don't have to, you don't want to take care of, uh, of HTML5 validation. It, uh, just validation. I, I mean, you can rely on HTML5 validation. It's fine, uh, but I don't think it's perfect for the, the usability of the thing. Uh, it's much more interesting to use a JavaScript library, library to uh, to do those kind of things. Uh, if you can, you should try this. If you if you can't, it's no problem. But I find this uh, kind of annoying after some time and. Uh, I heard it a lot that my uh, my clients were saying to me, uh, I don't understand why I have to fill a field, uh, I don't understand what fields I have to edit, and we have to be more comprehensive, uh, comprehensive with these kind of people. So I just try to find solutions for it. So you can, yeah, if you split everything uh, inside your, your form, you can do something a lot more concise. I understand all the right part. I did, uh, I did remove the, the right column because uh, in my example I didn't need it, but after, after it, I, I stripped almost the half, half of the form. So um, I think it's, uh, it's more concise and more pleasant to work with. Uh, so the admin teams uh, also are important uh, for your customers to like their platform. So yeah, so the default is seven. It's, it, it works very well, we all know it, uh, we get used to the tools, it's really nice, but it's also very gray, gray and white, and a little bit of blue, and yeah, it's a bit dull, I see. So if you want to change to something else, there's add minimal, it's kind of the same thing, but maybe more gray, <laughs> I don't know, I couldn't say. Um, but yeah, maybe the bar up there is it's totally great and not black and white. Anyways. And you have the material admin team. Um, I tried it and honestly I didn't like it. I, I really love the way that there is a, a very specific way to think uh, the, the design there. Uh, there's, there's rules from a material um, a design and there is a So the thing is that it adds some clips. So it's really nice because you have a new team to show to your, uh, your customer and uh, they're happy because uh, there's a lot of colors, uh, they, they kind of know a bit the material team because there's the tools of uh, uh, Google uh, showing some of them. Um, but at the end, uh, if you have to do more clicks to do the same thing, I don't, I don't think it's efficient. So let, let's say the operation button here, you have to click on it and then select edit instead of just clicking on edit. So personally I didn't really like it. And there's Clyro of course. Um, there's a bit of, uh, there's too much white space honestly <laughs> for, for this example because th those are all the same page that I'm showing. So we, we see here the, the part down there, we see like a six line of, of, uh, of content and you don't <laughs> see on Claro. So there's a bit of improvement to be done, but, but there's a, a very clear, uh, specific way to, to manage the design in Claro. This is the first time the community um, provides some strict rules, and I'm really happy to see it. So uh, it will be in the course soon, and it's part of a bigger project uh, that will lead to someday uh, a backend, uh, a GS driven backend. So, yeah. I'm really, really looking forward to, uh, to the, the future. Okay, so uh, my last part is about the form widgets. It's nothing really uh, fancy, and most of you already know this part because a lot of people talk about it. I won't show the, the paragraph. I will do a little demo uh, for the, the two last options, uh, the two last uh, bullet. Uh, but the paragraphs, the inline entity form, Everybody uses it now, so I mean, if you have to, you know, uh, make your specific uh, layout, a specific layout, but you just want the, the customer to, uh, the client to uh, to fill the forms, and it will 
show in a very specific way. Uh, I mean, everybody uses uh, paragraphs. I know. Let's say a lot of people use this paragraph. And there's um, the layout builder. They do layout builder in the core. I, I don't know if it's going to play. I think it will. Yeah, so if some of you haven't seen uh, the tool, a full uh, example of the tool, it's only two minutes, and I will come into the thing. Um, so you just have to activate the, the layout module before. It's very simple to do. And yeah, so you go in your content type, and you just manage, um, you manage the display, and you will select uh, the option down there. You just want it to use the layout builder. You have uh, two options. I uh, just took the first one for the example here. And uh, yeah, you manage your layout there. So you can do columns, you can do a lot of things, uh, very interesting things. Uh, you can format your node really easily. But there's still some limit to this, uh, this interface. Yeah, you will see it in like a second. Um, so you can choose here on the right column. Maybe the tool isn't, isn't done yet. They have to, to put some work on it. But you know, you, it would be nice to, to manage the breakpoints on the, on the, the columns there. Uh, I think it, um, it takes the, the one uh, that you configure uh, in your team, uh, which is a very uh, interesting way to do it because it's more dynamic. But sometimes you want to manage it more uh, to a more custom way to do it, so uh, it's not there yet. And yeah, so you set your layout there, and you have your. I'm sure the content view. I did a video because I, I didn't want to uh, to take too much time, and I didn't want it to not work like uh, most of the presentation today. Um, okay, so this is the uh, layout. And for those of you who haven't seen Gutenberg, uh, yeah, it's a WordPress tool. Uh, very, very, uh, there's a big hype uh, about this tool. It's very interesting, but I'll show you why I may not uh, like it so much. But it's really, really nice. Uh, very interesting tool. So, okay, so you edit your content, create content, basic page. Uh, so you got now your interface. Uh, oh no, not yet. <laughs> Always have this way. Uh, I'll just uh, nice. Three times. I guess and can I pause it? Alright. Like that. Okay, perfect. So everything about the camera is this nice honestly. I think it's it's a very interesting the, the, the only critic that I have is the way you use it, the way it, 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 it's meant to be uh, embedded in, uh, in Drupal. So you have your uh, basic fields on the right, your titles and everything, um, the other things that we all know from any notes uh, on the right side. And you have every, every other fields that you have, let's say you have um, tags, uh, image, or uh, paragraph, or anything, it will be uh, shown in the more settings. So the, the weird part about it is, let's say I have a required field in, uh, in the more settings, uh, and I don't feel it, I can't say it because there's an HTML5 validation out there, and it won't let me submit, but I don't really know why, because like I said earlier, it won't show it to me. So, I mean, the tool is great. It's great for maybe editing uh, instead of, uh, of a, a WYSIWYG. You have this, it's amazing. If, if I could use it only for editing, the, let's say, the, the body, it would be amazing. Uh, and then I, I, I could go back to my form and continue editing my node. I think it would be the best way to implement this. But uh, yeah, this is my only critic because it's really nice. If you like stuff, you know this guy. Uh, it's amazing. And uh, yeah, so this is the end of my presentation. I'll end it right there because uh, I think we were a little late. And uh, yeah, so let's see if you have some questions. Go ahead.
Thank you.